what we want to do today is focus on how to create what in Google Analytics, the um, user explorer report now calls this an effective user ID, but it's the user identifier that stitches together unauthenticated events to the most recent authenticated user on the same device. And then once you've created your uh, stitching, your stitched identifier, now you can start uh, creating new fields because you can aggregate against that identifier. First of all, the concept of a user pseudo ID is it's really an identifier for a device. So if you are using a native application, this is called the app instance ID. Um, the If I install an app on my phone, um, it will remain persistent until I delete that app. So if I delete it and reinstall it, I get a new app instance ID. On a website, it is a cookie. So it is available to the browser that set that cookie as long as it hasn't expired or that user is not clearing their cookies. So it really identifies a browser on a device for a predetermined period of time. The user ID, of course, comes from a customer database. So when a user authenticates and they are a known customer to you, they have given you an email address and a password or something like that, you have an identifier in your customer database that can be passed in as the user ID. What it does is it, uh, the most obvious thing is it now allows you to recognize that user no matter what their what device they're on. So if I have a, um, you know, a phone and a, and a computer and I'm logging in both of them to Amazon, Amazon can recognize that it's me. Um, when you pull up the user explorer report and navigate around the identifier that is being used is called the effective user ID. If a user ID is set, GA4 prefers to use that. Otherwise, it will default to the device identifier, the user pseudo ID. In GA4, when a user lands on a website, so this scenario out in front of you is I've landed and in my session, I've got three events. I land on a page, I have not yet authenticated, but I fired a page view off. I'll have a user pseudo ID because that is a cookie. It's gonna exist with every single network request, but I have not set a user ID until event two. In event two, I've authenticated. You've given me a user ID. Maybe it's one, two, three, four, five. Um, my device identifier hasn't gone away. So I've got both identifiers set. But imagine that I log out and then I have another page, page uh, event three, where I still have a device identifier, but I no longer have a user ID because I'm not authenticated. If you take a look at what GA4 does with in this circumstance, it will backwards stitch the user ID to events that occurred in the session before you authenticated. But it does not do that forward looking. So when you actually look at this data in the user explorer report, it will show two users um, and events one and two will be attributed to the user with the effective ID one, two, three, four, five. And then the second user will have event three attributed to them with the effective user ID of ABC. The way to test this, by the way, is to um, is to just send some data, some test data into a GA property that has nothing else. So you can just see your events. It seems intuitive, which I think is what you're getting at, that the effective user ID should span the whole session. All three of these events will have the same session ID, but that's actually not how that report works. It will show two separate users um, over three events in one session. Second thing with user ID is that it is not stitched across sessions. So what I showed in the last screen was a single session. 
now I'm showing a three different sessions. Say I visit the website, and actually, this is a, one of the examples I was talking to Brian about uh, when I was talking about this yesterday. Was if I I had a client who has a SaaS application, they advertise it on Facebook, they drive a lot of people to their website, um, and but those users don't convert for typically at least 30 days. So those early sessions, you have a user ID set, but you haven't created an account and you haven't logged in. At some point, you decide to create an account. Maybe you're a paying customer or maybe you sign up for a free trial. And now I have a user ID. But I come back in the future and maybe I look at the website again without logging in. In that third session, I have not set a user ID. GA4 will not stitch, it will not recognize that this user is on this device in sessions one and three. It has the data to do that, but it doesn't actually make the assumption that users, there's one user to one device. It assumes that users might be sharing devices and it, it sort of keeps this more simple. Um, so, if you are trying to recreate the same um, reporting that you see in the user interface when you have a user ID, the logic that you use will be specific to the sessions where you're logging in. It won't go across. But if you're trying to create a uh, a more expansive visualization of your users, you have a second option, which we're going to talk about, which is to make some assumptions about um, how users are using their devices. So you can use the device ID to stitch that user ID to sessions one and three, um, if that makes sense for what you're trying to do. And that second use case is really the approach that would you'd use if you're um, creating user profiles for a CDP.